during my birthday. My children know I celebrate forever, so yes. they're always pumped, and I believe they should celebrate like the whole month and all that too. So I'm excited. Don't get that mistaken. And that's why I'm so excited about the Greens joining us. So if you have followed us at all, we're on www.healthyandwholemarriages.com, our Facebook page. If you're on here now or not, you know, it's the HWM Conference and on Instagram, the HW Marriage. You will have seen us talking about the greens, Ahmad and Shari Green. If you just look on this screen right now, you see they're like super cute, right? <laughs> Actually looking like this in public, in person, like yeah. what you see is what you get. Flaws, you won't see any, but you know, we're all flawed in Christ, but I'm just saying they look good. They really look good together. Super, super awesome. And I'm so excited because we've had the pleasure of meeting them by way of being introduced from another awesome couple yes. who just celebrated 20 years of marriage, Angela and Ernest Jackson. So congratulations to them as well. But we're going to focus on the greens for tonight. Our monthly session for July is growing in marriage and maintaining a healthy and whole marriage while grieving. We are presenting to you guys, Ahmad and Shari Green. They met while attending the same church at different locations here in Smyrna, Georgia. Y'all don't understand what that means. Some people say we got five churches in different locations. That just means different cities is under the same umbrella, okay? But that's how they met. And it wasn't long before their passions for business and family drew them together. After a five month courtship, business minded, family or this business minded and family oriented couple turned, excuse me, I do, say it I do. That's what I was trying to say. Say it I do on July 30th because they have an anniversary coming up soon too. And they became a blended family as Shari came into the marriage with her, with her son, Nicholas. Shortly into their marriage, they expect, experienced. Y'all excuse me with all these blubbers. They experienced two stillbirths. They both have attributed faith, therapy, community, and daily habits to carrying them through such a painful life experience. Navigating the tough moments in marriage is something they love talking about, learning and learning about. Their vision for their marriage is to love, serve, give, and build together. I'm ex so excited to present to you guys. We're so excited to yes. present to you guys because my husband calls them one of his new favorite couples. I know um, these guys, man. They're great people. Yeah, we've adopted them from <laughs> Angela and Ernest. But, Thank you, Angela um, and Ernest. <laughs> yeah, we're so excited to present to you guys the Greens on tonight. And we're going to invite them to tell us a little bit more about themselves. But also encourage you, if you have any comments that you want to submit via Facebook or via the chat privately, because we do understand some people feel more comfortable submitting their questions anonymously, as opposed to submitting them to everyone, you can just submit them to the link that says Seth and Damia. And we will be sure to ask those questions at the end of their testimony or their sharing with you guys. So I present to you, Shari, Ahmad, Ahmad, and Shari Green. Thank you guys so much for being here. And I hope y'all feel the excitement coming from us. We are, and we're really grateful for you guys taking the time to share with us. Thank you. Um, we definitely feel the energy. Mm -hmm. That was the awesome intro. <laughs> so um, where should we start? I guess how we met, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... A little bit more in detail, I sent him a friend request on Facebook. Um, you know, Facebook suggested that I should be friends with him. And so um, I guess on that particular day, I just decided to send him a friend request. And, you know, I snooped around on his page a little bit and I saw that, you know, he had a heart to um, just want to grow spiritually and, you know, serve people and he loved business. And so um, when we first connected, we actually connected over business. I had a cookie business for my son at the time and he was a marketing professional. And so, yeah, we met to um, speak about that. You want to take over after that? 
Yeah. Um, it had to be nothing but the Holy Spirit because she would pop up in my people you may know and I would like re- re- remove it <laughs> like constantly. And I didn't, we didn't, I didn't figure that out until like, um, like after we started dating stuff and I st- started like really looking at one pic because she had changed profile pictures. And um, cause I could that profile picture would look a little bit, a little bit different. This and is, um, this is how it really looks in and, real um, life. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought, I thought it, when the person when she friended me, I thought it was a fake profile, so I I ain't paid no no mind until like I started snooping around and stuff like that. But yeah, that's pretty much how it went. Um, glossing over a few, you know, a few other details as I, I usually get into the weeds. But you know, she you know she friended me and found me, and so. Uh, and uh well i i messaged her first yeah but she friended me and then i went on the pursuit you know yeah so um yeah oh i forgot about that message it was a really sweet message yeah um it took some time i actually I actually <laughs> i actually waited two days from friend her to send a message i had to think about what i want <laughs> <laughs> so um, I do remember the very first day that we met in person, we met up. Um, so I came to church service. He was actually serving um, that morning. And I remember I was a little late. It's okay, though. I was there. And I was sitting in the overflow section and he was in there and I saw him, you know, walking in. And I mean, a couple years ago, I probably would lie about this, but I'm gonna tell the truth. So I was a little nervous. So I stared really hard at the screen. Like I didn't even see him. Like I just was so focused on the word. And I guess I just was shy to like say hello to him in person. That was my first time seeing him. And I tried to make him think that he was the one that wasn't willing to say hey to me which which was has was not confirmed until two to three months ago and i knew and i knew this was going on and i kept saying i was like you was looking really hard it was not talking about much at the time when i came in. i was focused it was no it word. was no reason for you not to see me at the angle that i was at and um yeah so that yeah so that it took a while but she finally admitted it so yeah praise the lord so <laughs> wait, 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 I gotta ask, I have to ask. So was he in proximity to you or were you doing oh, yeah. that? Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you what happened. So appreciate it. Go ahead, Amma. So, uh, so I'm so I was I did a lot of the communications and, and some of the marketing at, at the church. So at the end of the service, we would have our um in the overflow area after people would leave, we would have our debrief basically with, with the team. I actually led the team, so I would debrief with the team. And so I was going in to drop off my, after I'd done everything, I dropped off my, um, my laptop because I knew I was going to be in there. Walk in there, and she's sitting on the left-hand side. Of the table. Of the table, looking at, at the screen. I have to go up by the screen to the to the right. That's how she, that's, well, her hand wasn't up, cause I, <laughs> but, I, cause I remember she, but her hands was like this to the, and she was just looking intently. And I was, and I tried, <laughs> you know how when you try to wave at somebody, but you could tell they, they not trying to look. So you put your hand back down. That's what I had to do. And uh, <laughs> cause she went not away. <laughs> I came for the service. I didn't come that, for and him. That, and that, no, that, but that's what I kept. That's what I kept hearing for two years. <laughs> when the whole reality was, she didn't want to look. <laughs> she was nervous. But, but anyway, yeah. so yeah. So after service, we actually met up um, at a Starbucks, and you know, I was asking him a bunch of questions because I wanted to know what kind of person he was. Like, yes, I did want his help with marketing. That was the main goal, but. For me, I'm very much like curious about, you know, people's character and just getting to know them. And like, I like to work with people that I actually like. And so I was asking him all these questions. I wanted to know more about like where he was from, you know, different experiences and stuff like that. And I remember just having a good time. I was just like, yeah, so tell me about, you know, growing up and da 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 da. And he was really stern and just like, you know, straight faced. And I'm like, why is he so serious? Like, you know. I was talking about business. 
I was getting down to the business. I guess. <laughs> so, you know, after we met and we talked about some things, we were leaving and he stopped me and said, hey, um, you know, I haven't been here that long because he's from Savannah. And um, he was like, hey, I would love it if, you know, we could hang out. You can show me around the city. I was like, huh? Now, you would think because I was asking him these questions that maybe I was interested. But honestly, I really wanted to get to know what kind of person he was. I was at a place in my life. Honestly, I was at a place in my life where honestly, I was content in my singleness, like very content in my singleness. Did not. Is that a lie? <laughs> it's not a lie. It's not a lie. But. To, to say you wasn't asking me questions because you wasn't interested. Now that's, I mean, that's I didn't know you yet to be <laughs> interested. Like, you, I was attracted to you. All right. And then you were interested enough to take me up on my offer and show me around. So, you know, you know, there was something there because, you know, you just know the questions that she was actually asking me, you don't ask somebody that. Yes, you do. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> you ask somebody that if you're not sure. I mean, maybe I'm just different in that sense. But, you know, for me, you know, I just wanted to know certain things if I was going to do any type of work or anything with you. Yeah. Plus, I thought he was cute. So I just kind of wanted to know. Okay. So, thank you. <laughs> anyways, we um, shortly after he asked me that we went out what was it like we went to the high museum and we went to chipotle yeah so we went out i guess that was our first date i brought you um red velvet cupcakes yes he made red velvet cupcakes um which were really delicious actually well you didn't say that when i when i mean they but they, well, they, they were weren't right. the worst. First time making it. It they great. weren't the worst red velvet cupcakes i had had but for that to be his first time they were pretty good and they were pretty, like how he presented it and stuff. It looked like it came from Publix. Did it come from Publix? No, I made it. Oh, okay. I made it. I, no, I took my time because I had messed up. Uh, I had uh, messed up the icing a little bit on a few of them. I was like, man, I got to get this right. So I was learning how to. I taught myself how to like do the piping and the, and and the icing and all that stuff. So, so I, but I only but I only brought the ones that had looked good that I had did. <laughs> gotcha. So yeah, so I mean, shortly after that, I think you know we just continued to hang out and get to know each other um I remember saying a lot like we're just friends we are just friends that was like for the first two weeks uh and then you know yeah and then I think at some point did I ask you like well what are we doing this so you actually what happened what was funny was one day we was I went to her location service mm -hmm. And uh, one of one of our mutual friends was like, "Are y'all?" She was like, "Yeah, this is my boyfriend." <laughs> and and I'm just like, mm, "We didn't talk about that." But I'm just gonna wait, shake my head. I mean, I'm I would I'm glad I'm glad you said that. I just but you know I know we ain't talk we ain't talk about it. Then later that day she was like, you know, so so what I was like, well, you just said we was a boyfriend. <laughs> I already was calling my, my uh, I was already telling you, you know, we was more than friends anyways before then. So. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't remember that, but um, that's what he said happened. But anywho, but anywho, um, I think I mean it didn't take long for both of us to decide that, you know, we just both wanted the same thing. We wanted to date with the intention to marry. We wanted the next person that we decided to court to be that last person. And we were just kind of trying to figure out more details about each other before we actually made that decision to say, I do. So after about five months, we um, got married. We thought about the whole, you know, um, saving up for the wedding and this and that. And essentially it just was like, I mean, we just want to be married. Like, it doesn't really matter. Or we, we said have, we would have. We like, started planning and it got stressful. <laughs> yeah, that too. That too. Once we started adding up the people, because like I come from a very large Caribbean family. And so once we started adding up all the guests and stuff, it was like, mm, 
Yeah, nah, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, it's like five hundred <laughs> of, of like her fan. I got like twenty, so it was. <laughs> so we said like, okay, maybe we'll do like a reception or something like that, and so. So then, food, man, like just you know, they should start a new thing where I. I honestly believe you should start a new thing where people, you know, pay for their plate at the wedding. I, I, I honestly, I honestly believe it. Oh, I love some, it. Some people do that, Amad. Foolishness. Hey, praise the Lord, because you know, foolishness. That like, you know, don't bring me no gift. Could just come pay for your food. Just foolishness. Pay for food. That it ain't up but ten dollars. That yeah, that <laughs> what food costs ten dollars? A ten. It's a ten dollar. Like when you go to the go to the restaurant, Babe, like it costs more than ten dollars. Well, 12, 20, that's a, your, your gift was going to be more than that. <laughs> no. Give you a look, pay your pay for your plate. You no. Know? Um. So, right. So you see why we didn't have a wedding, right? Because we were not on one accord. Okay. <laughs> so we decided to get um, married. We had a small ceremony. We had a few of our friends and family there. Um, Ahmad's dad actually officiated the ceremony, which was really sweet. And... um yeah that that was pretty much that and then what a couple weeks later we planned to go to savannah so that he could show me around you know that's where he's from and when we got to savannah we actually went around his birthday which was in august and when we got there i remember just feeling really tired and you know i thought it was just the heat i remember feeling really bloated and i was like maybe i'm just and she know. was feeling kind of sick too. We went went to a few places and like we was eating. Stuff. I I ain't knew what was what was going. On. I thought it was the oyster that she had ate that when we had first got there. Cause I don't like I don't like oysters, but um, but no. And then, then uh, we got back and then what's funny was we took a test, took a pregnancy test. It the first one I I think either you read it wrong or it came back negative. It was one of the. I think I read it wrong. And then, so we thought we weren't, we weren't pregnant. And so we just trying, maybe we was thinking maybe she was just sick or something like that. And, and then what happened after that? Eventually we we took another one. Yeah. She went to the store and, and, um, she took another one. I think that one came back negative or inconclusive or something like that. And then you went to the, you went to the store. I was like, oh, I bought some more. I was like, why are you buying some more? Like you bought to, we bought to go to the, like, cause we actually had a doctor visit plan. But like a oh no, let me go back. So she took the other one, it came back positive, and then we we was going to go to the doctor visit, and then bought more to just to verify. I was like, we about to go to the doctor's visit, like you don't have to get a. <laughs> you know, you just want to make sure. You, you know, you don't want to get your hopes up. But yeah. So yeah, we knew. Um, you know, when we got married, we talked about like wanting to expand our family right away and stuff like that. So we're really excited. So we found out that, yes, indeed, I was pregnant. That's why I was sick in Savannah, Um, you know, going through all those changes. And so we got pregnant with our daughter, Grace. Mm -hmm. And that pregnancy, whoo, like, it was very, very tough. I was sick most of the pregnancy, a lot of nausea. Um, Oh my goodness. It just was tough. At the time I was also teaching in education, working with um, special education uh, students and just doing a lot of de-escalation every single day. My environment was very um, (laughs) stressful and, you know, it was one of those things where, um, it was like a love hate thing. I absolutely loved the work that I was doing, but the fact that I was pregnant and so sick, it just, it just wasn't the best environment. Um, you know, so looking back now, as I'm reflective, I would say that I definitely would have listened to my body a lot more because I think that my body was trying to indicate to me that I really needed to sit down. I really needed to rest. I didn't need to be chasing students around, you know, um, the school and, you know, just all the things that I was doing. So when I was, how many weeks was it when? At which point? Um, 
I will say why you why you were saying that. It was only it was literally just to let you know how severe like the sickness was. Like it was literally like maybe two weeks that she or a week that she maybe didn't throw up. But literally it was like every day to every other day. Um yeah. it was it was it was really tough and um just and I didn't and this is my first time I, I never seen somebody so so sick. I never I never really been around pregnant women that much, honestly, but to to see how much like uh, how sick she was mo- most days and barely could like sometimes like barely could eat like it was just it was really it was really tough yeah so um I remember there was a field trip that I was going on with some of um my students oh, and that one. yeah and I was actually playing a game with them in the classroom and I slipped and fell um and so At the time, I remember standing up and I called my doctor um, or no, I didn't call my doctor at first. You you text me while I was at at work and and, um, I was trying to tell you to 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 go to to the doctor. But you're like, I can make it throughout the rest rest of the day and and all that stuff. And I was just worried. I couldn't even really work the rest of the day. yeah and, and then finally finally she was like I'm going and then so I left I left a little bit early um from work to um meet her there at um at Northside now this was like 20 27 28 something weeks at this point um so we still we still I think we finally had got to like we were in the third trimester when, when you had failed at, at that point yeah and then you know weeks um weeks go by and then uh, did you want me to fast forward? You had something else to say. Um, well, I mean, pretty much just I didn't go immediately just because like I literally felt OK. Mm-hmm. And so I went on the field trip with the kids and everything. And then after something was just telling me, like, you should just go to the doctor just because like just in case. And so we went and they monitored me. Um you know, she still had a heartbeat and everything was fine. Um, and then how many weeks later was it? Uh, so then at 36 weeks was the the moment when um, she was telling me like, hey, I haven't felt felt her move. Yeah. And so it, it, it was at first, cause we was checking, you know, checking the little baby out and, and different stuff. And I was, you know, I was reading it a lot. Um, and they say around that time, you like, don't, you know, like they do kind of settle into a position like 36, 37 weeks. But um, it was just a little concerning that she didn't feel like any type of movement. Cause they say like, they'll settle in, but you can still kind of feel a little bit something. I obviously can't feel it. So I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on, but that's when she was like, I can't, I can't feel moving. Yeah. So I mean, I would say like, honestly, in my mind, there was no thought that like something had happened to her. I thought maybe, I don't know what I was thinking, honestly, but, you know, I had had a healthy pregnancy with my son, Nicholas. And so I definitely was not thinking stillborn. I was not, I didn't even know what that was. I had no idea that this was something that so many women experience each and every year. And so every day. So yeah. when we got to the hospital, um, you know, they were checking and checking and checking, trying to find the heartbeat and multiple different yeah, nurses different and doctors, doctors and nurses were coming in. And so that's when I'm kind of feeling a little anxiety at this point because I'm just like and nobody was really saying Same. anything until the last doctor came in and then she just went straight into it. Yeah. And it just, it was, it was, it was a shock. Yeah, it was definitely a big shock. Um, I don't even think heartbroken would even describe what I felt in that moment. Like I said, I didn't even know other women that had experienced this stillborn. So for me, I felt like, the oddball like I felt like hold on guys <laughs> like what are you doing like why would you allow this to happen to me like I know you I talk to you like what it um 
you know, I started to feel a little like an orphan, you know, spiritually, because it just, I just never imagined that that would have been our story. And so that was really tough because not only um, are you finding out that your baby is no longer alive, now they're telling you that you still have to, you know, give birth. And um, so preparing my mind for that, I think, was really tough, you know, thinking of like, you know, what's going to happen when I see my baby, actually, you know, after I go through labor and I had experienced labor before, so I knew how painful it was going to be. Um, but, you know, I'm thankful that I had, you know, my husband who was very supportive and, you know, just tried his best to like keep me calm and make sure I was okay and, you know, that sort of thing. But it was definitely tough for both of us. It was very tough for both of us in different ways. Um, you know, I had my girlfriends and we had family that was like, you know, whatever you guys need. I remember sending out a message to my family and kind of letting them know what was happening. And it's one of these, one of those things where like God was like inspiring me to share my faith with them. And it was weird because it was like, not that I necessarily wanted to, but I felt compelled to. And I remember reminding them that, you know, although we face these types of things, like God is still in control, like he still has a plan. Um, so yeah, so I remember that, um, you know, we, we went through the labor, um, it was very painful. Um, even with the epidural, and I think it's just because you don't have, um, the wiggling of the baby to kind of help you, you know, um, during that process. And I remember, you know, her coming out and just, I don't know, I felt very afraid. It, it just felt very surreal. It felt like I'm holding my child that is no longer living. It just, it was really hard for me to wrap my mind around it. it. But then at the same time, I wanted to embrace her. I wanted to, you know, say, I love you or, you know. So it was very interesting um, time for me. I really did not know how to process all of that um, at that time. I guess you can share what it was like for you during the hospital stay. And just grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, um, yeah, it was tough. I was, um, I was just hoping and praying that you know, God could do something to bring her back. That's all I, I remember was he was praying. Yeah. I remember that was, that was like a very pivotal moment. I feel like, um, in our marriage, because I remember him just praying and like, he was just like not ready to accept that she had gone and you know he was just very adamant that like you know god can raise her from the dead or you know whatever it is like a miracle can happen and i remember telling a girlfriend of mine i said if grace was you know to come back to life it would have been off of the faith of my husband because i felt you know very weak in that moment um so yeah, so after um, that happened, you know, we stayed in the room with her for a little bit and decided to do various tests so that we can kind of see like what happened, you know, was it something genetic? And of course the test came back, you know, inconclusive. So we don't know what exactly caused it. I mean, they did just about every single test they could have done. Um, we came back home and it just was very, um, it was just very surreal. It's like you go from carrying this baby, spending all this time with this baby, and then now there's no baby, but then all the symptoms are still there. So, you know, as if you would, generally nurse your baby or whatever it is I'm still going through all of that yeah, recovery. yeah and the recovery but then there's no baby um 
So that was a very, very um, challenging time. I will say that a lot of how I got through that was definitely um, like digging, searching, looking for God to give me some type of clarification, some type of answers. Like in my frustration, in my anger, like that was kind of all I knew to do um, was to really seek him in a more intense way. Um, and I think as far as our marriage is concerned, you know, it definitely was affected. It was like, we were going through this up and down, up and down, you know, kind of experience. And luckily one thing we didn't mention when we were courting, we started going to therapy. So, um, the same therapist that was with us through our courtship is the same therapist we still have now. And once we got married, we committed to doing therapy once a month. So the good thing was that, and honestly, after every major life event, it seems like we've had a therapy session <laughs> right after it. So, you know, I don't know if that was something, you know, God placed in our hearts because he knew we would need it. Um, but, you know, we were able to kind of talk things through with our therapist and to kind of fast forward, I guess, we decided to try again, how many months later? So, so that was Grace was 20, 2020 and we decided to try two months later um, and we got pregnant again with our son, Mateo. Mm -hmm. And this experience, was I, I wasn't really sick with Mateo, was I? So you what? no. Yeah, no. You, for the first, for the first um, trimester, um, there was a, a a good bit, but it was it was nowhere near as yeah bad as as Grace is. For the most part, I felt that. good. Yeah, with him, yeah. And um, at this particular time, I wasn't working at the school any longer either, so mm -hmm. it was a little bit different. Um, but I was working on starting my own business at the time. So I was home and Nico was home. This was during COVID. Oh, matter of fact, we got to back up because a month, a month before everything happened with Grace, that's when the pandemic started. The pan, right. And so. Got you, yeah. So not only did we have to go, like, not only were we in the hospital during the pandemic, uh, with that but we also we nobody came in with us right so it was just us by ourselves so my parents came and they walked around the the hospital and just prayed outside because they couldn't they couldn't they couldn't come in I was the only one that was able to come in um yeah and yeah. it was the same with uh Mateo because we were still in the midst of the pandemic yeah and um with him you know for the most part thing was good I actually switched doctors mm -hmm. um I had a new doctor this time I felt really confident about her she was very thorough um I mean would spend whatever amount of time talking to me about anything I wanted to talk about during my um visits and I felt really confident about this time around um another sad thing was that because we were in the pandemic I couldn't come into the um the doctor visits no more, and I would I would come to every doctor visit with Grace, but I couldn't go inside for um Mateo's. Um, yeah, yeah. So that was very different too. Yeah, because we were used to being there together. Um, and so with Mateo, I'm trying to think what was I know that there was one night where I just. I started to feel him move and then he just, it was the same thing. It was like, he just stopped moving. This was at 29 weeks. Yeah, this was, this time was at 29 weeks. Um, and this time, because I had experienced it with Grace, I knew, I just knew. I knew exactly what was going on. Yeah, you woke up at two o'clock. Yeah, I knew we have like a monitor at home where you can listen to the heartbeat. So I, you know, tried to listen to it, didn't hear anything. And I just, I knew, I just knew. 
And so we went to the hospital this time because of COVID being a little bit more heightened, they wouldn't allow him to come in with me. Well, we also went, we also went to, we went to the wrong side. We went to the emergency side. They went, they went, they wouldn't let me in. Yeah. And I was really, I was really, I was really upset at that point uh, because I couldn't come in. And um, so she got to go in. I had, I had, I walked all, no, I drove, sat in the car for a second and drove around to the, um, the labor and delivery side that they finally got you, got you on that side. And um, because she told me to come on, I can uh, drive, they told me I could drive over that way. And um, so I'm, I'm just waiting and they said I could finally, they finally said I could, I could, she called me and she was like, you probably could come in. And um, so I'm just waiting to, to see when I could come in because the doors were kind of locked. I couldn't like kind of get in. And um, and then some friends of her started texting me and, and different stuff. And I, I just, I didn't, I didn't, they didn't say specifically what was going on, but I could kind of tell something was going on. And then we, then I finally was able to get in and they told me where she was at. I'm running to the room. Um, and I get there, she has tears on her face, the doctor and the nurse. And before she could even say, say anything, I just lost it. Yeah, it was tough, it was tough. Um, so prior to him coming in, this time around it, it, I don't know, it may sound, I don't know how it may sound, so I'm not even gonna put a label on it but this is what it was when I was walking in that hospital and they said Amai could not come in my mind I knew that God was taking me on a journey I didn't know what it was that he wanted me to do or what this meant or I didn't know any meaning but I knew okay Lord you are with me I've been here before and I'm just looking to you to help me have some level of understanding, but I know you're with me. So with Mateo, it was almost like, I don't know, I had this level of acceptance very early on. And so when I got into the hospital, um, you know, when I got into the room and the doctors came in, I was just listening to them, watching them. And the Holy Spirit told me like, tell them, about Jesus, like tell them about Jesus, tell them that I love them, tell them that I am with them, I will never leave them, like was just telling me what to say. And they're still, you know, they're searching for the heartbeat and all that stuff. And meanwhile, I'm like talking to them about Jesus. I knew it was the Holy Spirit because why would I, you know, at a time like that, be thinking to speak to them about that, but you know, that's what I felt led to do. And so that's what I did. And even when she said, I mean, they were searching, searching, searching for the heartbeat. Like you can tell they knew that. And so my doctor actually was there. I forgot about that part. My doctor was on call and she ended up being there when we got there. So they were like searching, you know, trying to get in contact with her. She ended up being there. So she came in and she's searching, searching, searching. And I told her, I said, it's okay. It's all right. Like, basically, like, just stop. It is well. Like, it will be okay. And, you know, I got an opportunity to just share my faith and just my love for God and just how he's been there for me through some tough things. And it was just a beautiful moment. You know, we were all in tears and if nothing but for that moment, just to share my faith, I felt like that that whole experience had meaning. And it's one of those things because it's one of those things for me that like, I know it's a God thing because it doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like the human part of me (laughs) would have been mad, would have been pissed off, would have been like, why again? Like what's wrong with me? But it was just like, my cardinal mind was not in control at that time. And it was truly, 
you know, a spiritual experience. And I remember that um, whole stay in the hospital, every single person that God had connected us with before, you know, with grace, it was like they circled back around. And, you know, it just was beautiful, like continuing to share our faith with different people, hearing their stories, what was going on. And I remember the nurses would come check in with me. And, you know, I would, I had my um, meditation app playing and it was playing like, you know, scripture and stuff. And I would just share stuff with them, whatever I felt led to share. And um, I just felt very at peace, like, even though it was unfair, even though I hated it for my husband, because you got to think about it. I, I've, I have a child, we have a child together, but I've been there from the beginning. So these are his, you know, infant babies that he's never got to see first walks, first word. So I was more, you know, hurt and concerned about him having not had that experience. Um, but God gave me a peace, um, you know, through that. And we got to have a baptism for Mateo and it was beautiful. And we spent the day with him and we talked to him. Oh, we got to, um, read with Grace. We read her book. Yeah. So, um, with Grace, um, for Christmas, Shari had got me this book, um, said, uh, why a daughter needs a dad yeah. yeah yeah i'm not gonna lie it's 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 you know when i think about it it's 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 emotional yeah it's emotional yeah but i got to read my book to her so i was excited yeah yeah it was a really really sweet moment and i think because we had experienced it with grace with mateo we didn't you know we really took our time and just like spent time with him because they'll let you you know spend time with the baby in the room and things like that and even realizing um some hospitals don't even offer that option to certain moms they don't get to spend time with the baby they don't get to do things like a baptism so we were really um fortunate and blessed even in that way um I had made a connection with the person that was over the grief at Northside Hospital. So they brought us tons and tons of gifts and teddy bears and took pictures. And the cool, the cool part was in a lighter mood, they both look like me. So it was, it was cool. <laughs> he's cute so it's okay I'm I'm good with that I'm good yeah they both they both if you was ugly, ugly I might I uh, might have been <laughs> I'm just saying. well <laughs> I'm just playing they both they both they both look like me some uh you know beautiful beautiful so that was it was um you know it's it's tough so you know sometimes when I think about it it you know I had to realize, um, I realized recently that I'm still grieving. Um, and not just them, but my granddad. And reason reason why was because with my my children not being here growing up, I always wanted to do something that would impact not just my children, but my children's children. And just looking around, like I still, I was, uh, when, both at both times I still was working at the same place and I at the both of those I'm just like I'm still not doing what I always wanted to do and I started thinking about my grand my granddad passed when I was I never got to grow up with any of my granddads they passed before I was five years old but one of my granddads he was um he was an entrepreneur and I always wanted to uh, to be like him and I realized that recently that I was still grieving not only just them but him and all that and just all that and it's and it has been tough just just because you know my when I started going going to counseling after that um my uh, my therapist he was like um I've you know talked to many different people and, and different things and and sometimes I just want to I want to be here for you but I, I want you to know that sometimes um in situations like this, nobody ever asks the man how he's doing. 
And it, it's, it's been tough, you know, when every single time you've been, the only time, the only two times you've been in labor and delivery, um, you see death. And it's, it, it was definitely tough, but the beautiful thing was that I did get to spend some time with them and I never forget their little faces and their little noses look just like mine. <laughs> And uh, it was really, it was really cool. And then Mateo, his head looked a lot like uh, me and my dad's, and it was just, it really, um, it really was was interesting. They both had a lot of hair, like I did when I um, when I was born too. So that that was fun. But you know, just yeah, as, as a as a person who doesn't have any biological children, to go through that is tough. Well, I will chime in here and I just put a mint in my mouth so that I would not offend my husband. Listen, I'm, I'm trying not to cry uh, because this is, I'm not, I, and I honestly, I went to praying right then because I, I think that was a, a big part. I could hear your voice kind of breaking up and because um, I hear the testimony side of it from Shari, right? You know, she had the opportunity to witness while you were going through and you're struggling, trying to break through, just trying to get through the barrier of being there with your wife. And um, I I honor you tonight um, with the spirit of love. And I could not imagine. And, um, and I'm so appreciative that you, you've shared your side of it uh, because it's, it's such a different feel for me to hear it from your perspective and how gracious your wife has been to just allow you to be who you are it's just, listen, um, you had to ask a question. I don't want to cry, but man, this is wonderful to just to be able to share and, and to really grow and understand the way that you all went through this, to me, heartbreaking process. And to see you all still sane, I didn't know there was two children. Uh, so to, to hear it, and I kind of heard that in your voice earlier. Uh, am I when you kept saying, was it this one or or that one? I was like, oh my gosh, there were two. Um, and this is, oh my gosh. Let me go and ask a question now. Okay, I'm gonna start with this question. Were you guys done or? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I guess for the most part, um, that was pretty much the story of, you know. What a story. Okay, I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, just for content. So just so people know that both of those happen within a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was April. Ooh. My God. 2020. 20, and then January. January 2021. Okay. So I do want to ask, um, and, and there are some comments here, and I just want to toss out once again, if you all have any questions for Ahmad and Shari, feel free to put them in the comment box below. And I, you can do so anonymously where they go to myself and Seth directly, or you can post it um, to everyone and I will ask the question either way. We just wanna make sure that everyone's comfortable with any questions they may have. And Seth is checking um, on Facebook Live as well, just in case there are any comments, questions, concerns that way also. But I do want to start off with the question of, I have several actually, and some of them actually have something to do with you, Ahmad, because I am familiar with that. I, I like to, I guess I'll just say this. I know people who've experienced that, and I don't mind learning about different experiences. And so by the grace of God, I was able to learn ahead of time that that was a possibility. You know, like you said, Shari, like you had never known anyone. And I'll start there. You had never heard of it, didn't know that this was possible, right? Like, did anyone ever come to you guys um, and embrace you guys at or around this time with, hey, we've experienced this. We understand what you're going through. Can we help you guys? Can we comfort you through this? Because that's the reason why we're doing this now, right? There's so many people who have experienced it. And unfortunately, that is your testimony. You had no clue what was happening. You didn't even know this was a thing, quote unquote. 
you know so did anyone ever do that for you guys during your um, during grace i would say to that, start i would say that um was hearing from more people that saying they were they went through it mm -hmm. or stuff like that out now on the other side there was a lot of people we had a lot of our community just come and support and get us groceries and different different stuff and and, and whatnot other other tidbit i forgot i forgot about i didn't i was a contractor at the time with grace so i i really i had i didn't really have any like I had, they gave me some they gave me some time off but i didn't really have like grieving time yeah okay yeah okay i don't think i had met that many people that had experienced it it still was like a very new you know new um thing and i think the hospital did connect me with like support groups but still don't know that many people um that had experienced it prior to me experiencing it actually the opposite happened mm. a lot of the people that i knew started experiencing stillbirths yeah. after yes. you after yeah, oh, me man, and matter of fact the week before um a friend of ours from church we yeah. didn't they, or probably wasn't even a week but some days before and we were um we reached out to them no they reached out to us to tell to like say that we're here for you and they were in the, and they were in the hospital they had a the stillbirth too they had a stillbirth too oh wow yeah one of our close friends they have a beautiful baby boy now yeah, uh, yeah. but Emory, at, right yeah named emory but at the time yeah a few days before and we didn't even know they had a stillborn too yeah so can i ask regarding the the counseling aspect of it did you all change the focus from the marriage to the the births during that period well yeah um in a sense yeah because we, we were still mind you we're, we're only we're just about to hit two years. yeah yeah right. yeah and so it was a lot of that and marriage um things to like learn and grow through right so how i'll jump around since he brought that up how have you guys obviously through counseling but can you give any tips or tools or just whatever else you all may have done um that have helped you manage yeah. your marriage and stay healthy in your marriage because obviously and i'm gonna say obviously we can see that you guys still are right on the outside, at least, right? When you first started talking, y'all, and like I said at the beginning, y'all are super cute. So when you start talking, y'all are like joking and still, you know, going through the, um, what would they say, the out, often the oogly, googly eye yeah, type of phase of, yeah, the yeah. newlywed, the honeymoon phase, even telling your story yeah. about, you know, dating and how you guys met in the courtship. So how have you maintained that marriage um, yeah. being healthy during these experiences? It's, it's it's a journey. It's a journey. I don't think I don't think anything. I don't think anything. Um, as far as that is something that like it's it's like it's a process. And like sometimes you have to remind yourself it is a process. It's a process. Okay. And one thing I didn't know before this was the actual grieving period. Like well, not grief period, but they they say the, the stages, the stages of of grief, right. and mm -hmm. I still I still don't know much about it. I probably should actually look it up, but um, I you can, and it's not and it's not like because they tell you there's stage this stage this stage this stage this, mm -hmm. but it can also go around mm -hmm. many different stages, and to the back to your question, um, one of the things that like like we said before is that that we try to do is to have counseling every month we were mm -hmm. already doing it anyways um but to do that just to stay stay on pace i think i think also one thing when we were recording one thing that was very big for us was um just the intentionality of doing something that helped us to grow in our marriage. And so I remember we were reading a book 
um, at the time around, you know, marriage and stuff like that. So there are times where we will try to read different types of like um, books that actually talk about communication <laughs> that talk about, um, you know, different things like that. Um, one in particular, crucial conversations, like how to have, you know, high state conversations mm -hmm. with one another. And so I think, I don't know what, you know, other people's marriages look like. So I don't really know how to compare, like, you know, I, I couldn't compare what it's like for us against anyone else, because I don't know. Um, but I think that we go through our ebbs and flows of, you know, we do the work and then we'll start sailing. And then maybe we'll have a rough week. And then we're like, okay, hold on, what went wrong? And then we're like, oh, we got to do the work. We got to go back to doing the work. So I feel like we've just kind of been on this journey of like doing the work, maybe, you know, our own humanity, just getting in the way, our own imperfections, our own stuff that we came into the, you know, marriage with getting in the way. And then us kind of going through that humbling moment, coming back to each other, like, okay, how are we going to get back on track <laughs> mm -hmm. and starting it, you know, over again. So I feel like we're still working through it. Yeah. Cool. The, the one thing I would say, I, I think y'all asked for a tip or something like that. The, mm -hmm. the one thing that popped up in my mind uh, during um, my, the still work with Mateo and just right now um, was that I think I, well, I don't know, but for me, peace isn't the absence of a storm. Is peace to me is the presence of God, and come on, man. And so, yeah, ebbs and marriage. You have ebbs and flows, and you have various storms that that come our way. And I think a lot of times we we get. I, there's no, there's literally I, 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 from all the re reading I've done, I have never seen any story in the Bible where peace was presented as what we think of in the worldly sense of that everything is just okay. Peace in the Bible, every single time, there there is either a mist of a storm or somebody just came from a storm, but there was always the presence of God. And so that's 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 the biggest thing, because I think sometimes when you place when you place your your um, when you place your mind on pieces being this worldly, everything's OK, everything's smooth, everything's good, everything's peaches and roses, you get rocked when when the storms come. You get moved. But if you lean if you lean on the fact that no what i kept telling my what i had to keep telling myself during mateo and, and and sometimes even now is god is with me and if i remember that there's peace amen yes that's amen. beautiful thank you for sharing wow. that um and so i'll ask you a couple of questions that i had and i'm um, just so you guys know uh, so far there's just been like test amen well said, thank you so much for sharing your testimony. Um, so true, I love you both, all, all, all that type yeah. of stuff so far, because of course, you know, I keep coming back to the cute factor. So I'm sure that's what the all part was. Um, but um, did you get the opportunity? Well, I guess you, you probably did then because you all said that you got a chance to read to Grace and then you got a chance to do a baptism with Mateo. So I was going to ask you specifically, Ahmad, if you got a chance to hold either of them or both of them. I did. You were talking good. You were talking about the COVID and I was thinking the second time at least, I was like, they had started getting real restrictive about letting anybody in. And a lot of women were experiencing birth or un unfortunately still birth alone in some cases. And so when you said, you know, you were stopped at the door, I wasn't sure if you even got a chance to have that experience. So um, 
Yeah, I was I was able to get, I was able to to come in after they moved it to the right area because mm -hmm. we actually were not supposed to go to the emergency side. Okay. We were supposed to, we were supposed to go to the labor and delivery side. And they would have let me in immediately, but because we had stopped by the emer emergency side, the lady at the, I remember the car, I, I, I won't forget any part of that, that night. We, um, yeah, I won't, anyways, I had a conversation with the, uh, the lady at the front. Um, right. Yeah, I was upset at the time. I understand. Or empathize. Um, do you, now, Shari was saying she was content in sharing her faith. Right? She was content and began sharing her faith. And that's me kind of putting a label on it, if you will. Um, but at least around um, Mateo, she said, and you had emotionally just lost it. While she's sharing her faith, like, where were you? Did you ever come back to terms at least enough to be like, is she serious right now? Or, okay, I can get myself together. What was that for you? I probably never, never was thinking about, about her. I was, I was just, I was just, just sad. Mm -hmm. uh, I was sad if anything, but she even like went, it was, so the first, so with Grace, it was, I think we talked about, it was more like, like I was like the strong one. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. and, and with Mateo, she was the strong one because mm -hmm. at the I I never forget how everybody I never forget that room, the smell, the look on people's faces, um, where the curtain was, where the bathroom was. I'll never I never forget any of that. And like how I just felt at the um, at that moment, and in that first one, so she consoled me. And then I was able to kind of, uh, I don't know what the word is, but I was able to be a little bit. Right. I was all right. I, was, I guess that's the, the best way to say it. I was all right after that. Okay. Just a few just more a few questions. questions. I'm getting feedback for some reason now, but just a few more questions. Can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a few more questions, if that's okay. Um, and you guys, if you have anything, feel free. Uh, we'll be wrapping up soon, but um, just so that, you know, other people who may get the opportunity to watch this, I want to make sure we cover a few other things. Um, because again, you know, now we're getting all these statistics about even us as African Americans, right? And the statistics of uh, difficulties with childbirth, difficulties with still births, and all of that. And we weren't really mm -hmm. privy. I was somewhat aware um, during our pregnancies, but it just seems to be coming full circle, not even full circle to terms for everybody, right? Excuse the pun, but everybody's starting to find out that we're not always um, having a smooth selling process as some other people may be going through. And so it's still kind of new, unfortunately. And I, I'm saying that, and I digress to an extent as well, because even my mom, she had a horrible pregnancy with me. And she was sick. She said there was not one day that she can recall that she was not completely sick to the point where she was like, I am never doing this again. She wanted four children and she was always throwing up every day miserably. And similar with my my brother, um, never finding out anything, you know, and you all tried to get tests done. And that brings me to the next questions. Were there any I know you said you did that with regards to Grace. Did you request it for Mateo? You did test as well. And it came back saying that they didn't find anything that suggested, you know, that the pregnancy shouldn't have gone well. Okay. Um, and you said with regards to Mateo, like you, the heartbeat, you already knew. You woke up at two o'clock in the morning, you already knew. Did you tell your husband at that point, like, I know what's happening, or did you just want to wait and see before? Mm -hmm you know, telling him what you were feeling. Yeah, I don't think I told him that I knew that that's what it was just because I know him well enough to know that like, that probably was not going to help him to be calm. And um, I want to be calm. So, you know, I just, it was just something that I internalized at the time. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I think lastly, how much time did you have, if you all recall, between the time where you learn? Because I can't imagine learning and then you're telling me to push. You're going to have to push. Like I need to process what you just told me before you tell me I have to push too. Um, hey. Well, both of them were different. Um, but different. They were within um, three days, I think, in between. Um, For but, Grace. Yeah. Well, so yeah, with Grace, I think what happened was that happened on I think a Sunday when we finally went to the to the hospital, and then on. Uh, Monday because every single time it happened, um, Nico was getting ready to go to his dad's house. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's how, how, yeah. how I recall because um, we the first time with Grace we sent him to his dad's house early, and then this the time with Mateo, his dad picked him up on Monday, and I think we had found out on Saturday. So between each time we were back in the hospital, probably within two to three days. So wow. Wow. Because it becomes, um, you know, unhealthy after a certain Mm -hmm. point. So they want you to um, go into labor within the first couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, babe? Uh, Well, I will say um, thank you guys so much. Uh, before I even do this last question, thank you guys so much, of course, for sharing, because it has been a blessing. And I I knew in speaking with you guys and then the referral or recommendation that we we received that you all will be able to bless so many other people. So I'm hoping that and praying and believing that this will touch so many people to the extent that if it's just simply knowledge, you know, um, and in listening to you, Shari, it was a little bit of I've said this recently that sometimes we don't realize that some things we go through are not because of us. Sometimes they are, but they're not always for us because we're supposed to be a testimony for someone else. Sometimes we're supposed to help someone else. And you go into telling this story about these experiences and then say, okay, and then I started sharing my faith and telling them it's okay. And, you know, do you know Jesus and all of this? And me wrapping my mind around what I mentally have been there. And I'm with you. I, I know that had to be God, you know, in there with you uh, during that time and speaking through you. But that was another kind of affirmation and confirmation, if you will, for me, that we go through some things because he's trying to ensure that other people see him and see his face. Speaking of faces, of course, looking at your own face, Ahmad, you're going to think you know, that they were just all you and super cute. (laughs) Seth has always said he did not want his daughter to look like him. He was like, that ain't gonna be good. So I thought it was so cute. You said that, oh, she was super cute with the little nose. And then I thought about him saying, nope, I don't, I don't want a girl to look like me. So I think that's so cute. But um, the last thing I wanted to see or ask of you guys is what, if anything, could you share or advise each of you individually and collectively, any person individually, any couple who has or may go through this in the future. And you all can start however way you see fit. Um, From a woman's perspective, I would say that don't be afraid to ask for support in whichever way that you need it. Um, I think often women, you know, especially Black women, we wear this, you know, resilient strength cape. And I think we have to learn which cape we need in certain situations. And that was definitely a cape of compassion and support (laughs) that was needed and grace. So I would say just from a woman's perspective um, to be open enough to at least ask for whatever type of support um, you need to let your spouse know what kind of support that you need. Don't even assume that they're going to know or that they're going to show up how you think they should. 
Um, and I would also say in the grieving process past, you know, um, having that experience, let it be okay for the two of you to grieve in your own ways. Like, don't even try to compare it because it won't be the same. Oh, and then uh, um, on my uh, on the on my side, on the male perspective, um, I think the thing I was talking about with peace is is one big thing. Um, another thing that we we've talked about, you know, you know, we're going to we're two, we respond different. I, I'm not sure of any. I'm not sure of any marriage where both of the people are the same. Um, so, you know, you have to be, um, understanding and know that grief shows up and impacts each, each, um, each other in a different way. And find somebody to talk to, uh, find, find somebody to talk to, um, even if they just want to sit and listen. And for for me, I realized like I I just like helping people. And sometimes I, I, I sometimes I, I sit thinking, like, man, I don't, you know, I don't do that as much as I used to. And just re, for for as a as a male, anything, the biggest thing is just find somebody to talk to, um, do some things that you love to do. Remember the the good times. Remember the the great promises of God, and remember that peace isn't what happens on the on the on the outside. And it's funny because growing up, I used to I used to always like when it rained. I like rain, um, actually. Um, and reason why I like rain is because, and and like storm stormy weather and stuff is because. People always, people always get kind of like, kind of up, you know, upset when like it ruins their plans or, or stuff like that. But it's a, it's, it's good to know that God created the rain to be able to produce the beautiful days that we see. The beautiful days of the, the, the plants blooming and the, um, the trees growing and all this different stuff that the fruit all that different stuff, it doesn't just come from sunshine, it comes from the rain too. I love that. Thank you guys so much. So, so, so much. You guys, we are so grateful, of course, to the Greens for sharing with us. We hope and pray that you all were as blessed and um, just inspired as we were. At this time, I wanted to share a little bit of information. Uh, you heard a lot about peace. And I just want you guys to know that Shari is a life coach for moms. You can find her on Instagram. I believe it's Shari Green Coaching. Um, and then uh, this may have been as a result of their experience, but you heard her husband consistently speak about peace. And guess what? She wrote a book that's called Deal, Heal, Grow. It's 30 days to inner peace. So please check her out on Instagram. There's a link there where you can learn more about her. Excuse me. You can also learn more about the book. And we really don't want you to just learn about the book. Go buy the book, okay? Um, because, of course, we if you've experienced what we experienced, just having this time to sit with them, can you imagine reading those words? So check it out, you guys. Again, Shari Green Coaching, and we will put that on our page as well so that you all will be abreast of how to get in contact with them later. Again, thank you guys so, 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 so much. Oh, yes, sir. Please. You got please, please get the Dale Hill Grow book. It is phenomenal. Shari writes um, very well. It is very spirit-led and filled with tools and and stories to be able to help you just grow and heal and deal with the things that that come your way she is very profound in that way everybody this is a glowing endorsement i don't endorse everything but when, <laughs> but when i do it's great so please get the dale hill grow book 
coming to stories near you. <laughs> um, I will be, she may have some, some events soon where she will do some book signing. I'm going to try to push, push for that, but please get the book. <laughs> we will push for that with you. We definitely will push for that with you. Um, Anything else for, for I'm getting my copy tonight. Yeah, yeah. We tonight. we are proud of you guys and great. we thank you so much. Um mm -hmm. it is approaching a little time here for us. So we're going to conclude the evening. Um if you guys want to say anything else, you're welcome to do so before we <clears throat> wrap up. I I say one, one last thing. Sure. Any guys, I don't know if there's any guys watching this, um, you can find me on Facebook. It's Amar Malik Green. A H M A A D. Message me if you don't have anybody to talk to. Oh, I love it. I love it. Love. Wait, Ahmad, may I have the middle name? I'm going to put this on our page too. Malik. Oh, cool, cool story. Mateo, his middle name was Malik too. So I was able to slide that name in there. <laughs> <laughs> Spell it for me, Ahmad. A oh, which one? The first Malik. name? Malik. Malik. M A L I K. Okay, just wanted to make sure. All right. I, I don't know why I didn't ask you that, um, being that, according to you, she stalked you on Facebook and you kept deleting her suggested, you I'm, know. I, I'm, I'm present on Facebook, um, as you can see. Oh, what? <laughs> so you, you, can, you can find me there. Um, oh, just men, just reach out me, reach out to me if you, if you want somebody to talk to. I love it. I, I appreciate that. I think that's powerful and pivotal because, again, I always say it's so important to us that men and husbands become a part of a community, a tribe of healthy and whole husbands. You know, right. oftentimes we have sessions and conferences prior to us and men are reluctant to be there. They're coming, you know, being pulled there or they're not there at all. And it becomes an issue or the women just opt out of going because they feel like, well, if he's not coming, then why should I show up and look, you know, like I'm single when you still can be a part of the, I mean, you are still a part of the, you know, the, the actual couple that can help keep it healthy and whole. And so it's important to us that we get a male's point of view sometimes so that men feel and understand it's still about the couple, each individual person. So with that being said, guys, Thank you for joining us. Thank you for allowing us to be on your journey of a healthy and whole marriage. You are welcome to find us at www.healthyandwholemarriages.com. And I always forget, you know, at the end of such powerful um, testimonies from our, our presenters. So that's our website, Facebook, the HWM Conference, obviously, and on Instagram, the HW Marriage. Thank you guys so much once again. I mean, at this point, yeah, we love you guys. You know that already. And we are going to pray this thing out. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you. And we praise and bless your name for the greens. God, we thank you for the testimony. We thank you for the sincerity of the hearts tonight. God, I believe that they touched somebody. God, if they didn't touch anybody else, they touched me. And God, I appreciate you for them. Well, God, God, I want to take this moment to just lift them up before your God. So we just want to pray for a mind. God, thank you for his heart. Thank you for his, his mind and even his willingness to support other men. Oh God, we pray that you will open up the avenue for him to do what his heart so desires. God, we believe that you are going to touch him in new ways, even on tonight, God, that he may be able not only to share his story, oh God, but to bless other men through his testimony and his strength, oh God. God, we pray for Shari tonight. God, you know uh, the lane that you have her in. God, you have positioned her to be great. And God, we pray greatness over her life tonight, oh God. We pray that you will strengthen her in a new way. And God, even uh, as they join together as a couple, God, we believe that they are the power couple that this city and that this state and this country needs to share a story with integrity, oh God. Lord, we believe that their heart is right and they are ready to be used as vessels of the kingdom of God. So we pray over their lives, God, that you will bless them in your way, not in how they even see it, oh God, but what you will have them to do in the coming days and months and years to come. God, we just appreciate you, oh God. And we pray healing 
And we pray restoration in their hearts and their minds and their bodies. And God, that they may continue to do your work. Lord, we pray for every couple that has represented here. We pray for every couple that will see this message and this testimony tonight. God, we pray that you will touch in your way, oh God. Lord, thank you for the seed that has been planted. God, we trust you for the increase. And until we meet again, be healthy. Be whole. Be, be blessed, blessed is our prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Have thank a good you. night. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>